What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 8 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded King Luin campaign. So as we saw last time, we were able to cleanse Northern Ulthuan of Nakari's presence and thus help the elves out a little bit and are now going to be able to return triumphantly to Bretonia where we can continue our, uh, well, this wouldn't be an errantry, but, uh, well, our war against both of the dead and the greenskins. In addition to that, we were able to reach the likes and comments threshold previously, so this will be the bonus second episode of today all right now uh, we also did end off last episode with the bug the ancient bug that's been around for i gotta i gotta think at least five years i mean it's been a long time since i've played bretonia and i remember the bug existing back then but anyway as you can see we're still okay all you have to do is reload and uh, end the turn again and it does work uh since i had to do that off screen anyway i just went ahead and did a little bit of admin namely just swapping a few items around i also went ahead and recruited another paladin mostly because he has this virtue of the ideal with the aura armor and physical resistance gotta try to get a few more of these especially for the peasant army as that would be uh, quite nice uh, but uh, for now I think we're gonna put him in Lewin's army and then lastly I sent I believe Eleanor Dubois out to sea to grab a mysterious island because well it was right there and the uh, mysterious islands don't encounter combat or require combat and because of that we were able to get I guess enough experience to level up Eleanor here to 10 which means we can immediately grab muster the farmhands and arcane wisdom for the research and the Mysterious Island rewarded us an Executioner's Axe. So quite nice in that regard. Actually, speaking of Mysterious Islands, there was another one over here. I think we can send Esther to it as well. Yeah. All right, Esther, go over there. I know that means you won't be giving the public order to Grung Zent, but hopefully it'll be worth our time. All right, shiny boots and fresh recruits, and ah, just favorable wins, no items. Oh, well, uh, still wouldn't turn my nose up at the free 1500 XP. We also got to keep an eye on the River Reich, because periodically islands do appear along it. Uh, would be amazing if we got a random skull island on the river here, but uh, yeah, just got to keep an eye on it. Anyway, uh, let's get to moving and whatnot. Oh, you know what I wanted to try as well? Uh, while Eltharian wasn't really willing to pay us a lot for Torkorali, and we are going to nickel and dime him a little bit, and we can try to trade Shrine of Kurnos to you, because we're not looking to hold it anyway. Uh, 37 and... Yeah, 6.2k. If we wait a turn, it might be more, but I guess it might also be less. I don't know, 6.2k seems decent, right? We could also do the military alliance, but I'm not sure. Would you be willing to... Hmm. I mean, you know what, let's not get into any unnecessary wars right now. We can get into our own errantry wars when we're ready for it. Uh, we got the endgame scenario approaching, so we uh, uh, we gotta be close to Bretonia for now. Let's do this. You can have the Shrine of Kurnus. Yes. I like so. Nice. And that'll surely make you like us quite a bit. And we'll also trade these things, but probably once you actually get a little bit more uh, more cash. Luan, you are going to go green skin hunting shortly, so let's move you down to Moussillon. And let's have Avril Mercier follow you along as well, and just for a few more levels until she acquires the... Uh, I want to say the farm bonus. Not that it's crazy necessary, but it's just a couple levels, so I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. It's not like we're going all the way to 30 and we already have bonded service, but we want to wait a little bit before she can uh, recruit anybody anyway. And we will want to get, you know what, we'll probably send her out on a little bit of a recruiting spree, get a couple field trebuchets for our peasant army, and then get a couple grail reliques for our peasant army as well. Uh, maybe a couple battle pilgrims just to have a little bit in the way of damage dealers for them. Something along those lines. Anyway, uh, let's continue building. We have the water wheel and I guess the defenses, the city watch at the marches of Kuhan. Then we'll switch back to, let's say, peasants duty for the growth. I want to get that tier four and unlock two more building slots. Are both of the, ah, they're both tier five. 
I was wondering whether the uh, two uh, unique buildings, the landmark buildings, were tier 4 and 5, or 5 and 5, but unfortunately, it's the latter. Oh well, let's see if there's anything else to build. Not Kathik, uh, I'm still gonna ignore Fort Berg Beret. I feel bad, but not that bad. And I believe that's it. Sure, we can upgrade the tall walls at Marienburg, but I don't see the rush at the current time. Alright. And I think, or at least I hope that that is... Oh, you know what we could do? Adelard can still move. Hmm. Alright, if Adelard can still move, who's at war with the Broken Axe? Carcassonne is, eh? Hmm. Okay, here's the question. Carcassonne, let's talk to you for a second. Uh, you'd be willing to give us about 2,000 gold for a military alliance. The thing is, we are looking to... Mm, we are looking to confederate them anyway, so them paying us money for an alliance that would happen anyway might be a decent choice for us. Yeah, all right, and money. It's money. Let's do this. Like so. Then we will join your war against the Broken Axe, but not the Skaven, at least not yet. Oh, only 800 money? Yeah, you know what? I should have done that the other way around. Probably could have gotten more money that way. Yeah, whatever. Uh, join war against the Broken Axe. Like so. And, oh! Enter a military alliance with any faction gives us another free war banner. Man, we got more war banners than armies at this point. I do still find it silly that they have the limitation where you can only have one banner of each type in an army. Like, it's not like they're so strong that the army would be incredibly OP if you had six war banners, right? Anybody, anybody know of any or can think of any reasoning as to why they possibly could have done this? Because really, they're not that strong. And in vanilla, a lot of them are just absolute garbage. At least in SFO, they're reasonably strong. Anyway, earn 20 allegiance to the allied faction. Working on it with uh, with the Vress. Well, let's have Adelard now move to Bordeaux and besiege it. For yes, yes, for Bretonia. All right, Adelard, go. And oh, you have that. Okay, fine. I forget. Yeah, he needs skills. Like he needs a uh, siege equipment in order to do this. Then, let's go back to the prophetesses for a second. We have you, who is magnanimous, and we're gonna get you on the field to start leeching XP as well. All right, and hey, recruit an additional lord. Yeah, she's gonna cost us a little bit of money per turn, but it'll hopefully uh, and be worthwhile. Oh, damn, you wasted points on this. Hmm. Well, nonetheless, uh, how's your vows looking? Ah, but you have completed the Troth of Protection, which is nice. Let's get you Pledge to Protect. Though, honestly, for these uh, prophetesses that are just going to sit in the settlements, the second and third troughs probably don't really matter. At least not so near as much as the first. And I think now we should be good. And there's probably or potentially diplomacy to do, but I think we can wait on that one. So skip, 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 and and then the turn. Let's see if Grom the Paunch is hidden here and is going to go after Mr. Rattle. Okay, you know what? Let's level him up just in case. I don't trust it. Now you, my friend, are going to be buffing the peasants. And oh, I see that this buffs Lowborn Militia. Which includes the, the basic peasants, but it doesn't buff the foot squires or the battle pilgrims, which is a little bit... Or the grail relics. Which is a little bit unfortunate, because the high-end form of this peasant army will probably have a decent amount of those units, rather than the most basic types. And we'll still want trebs in here, so engines of war will be necessary. And we'll still want peasant proficiency for the range units. You know what, maybe it's safer to just go range units first. Even though this is a fairly considerable buff for the basic peasants. Now, you know what, still go for lowborn militia. I don't think this... Well, this lord isn't going to be nearly as point-hungry as Lewin, so he should still be okay. And frankly, the peasants need all the help they can get. As otherwise, they're locked in a permanent meat grinder. And yes, I am still aware of the... Uh, uh, the quest that is here. The reason I'm saving it is eventually we're going to want to uh, confederate Raponce and Dilianess, and when we do, we'll get that uh, confederation debuff, unlike the uh, technological confederations, in which case we may want to... Uh, uh, we clan scribe performed a ritual. Yeah, great first clan scribe. Middenland is gone. Oh, no. Well, by confederation, but they were giving us money. 
<laughs> a shame. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, we may want to counteract the uh, negative of the public order. Uh, we have Errantry of the Lady, Campaign Movement Range in Own Armies and Own Territory. Lovely. And a free giant blade at that. What is Lewin using? 15% weapon strength? And what is this? Entry of the Lady ensure that the following has been constructed. Royal Stables. That is constructed. Oh, and it's instantly complete. So you're telling me we have 40 turns of this now? Yeah, we do. Well, I won't complain about that either. Uh, free Talisman of Endurance. And what do we have here? Ensure Sanctuary of the Errant has been completed. Okay, that one has not been completed. And the reward for it is weirdly weak. And damn, why are we getting all the rewards right now? And not that that's a bad thing. Uh, Lewin. I would like you... Oh, you already have a Talisman of Endurance. What about the Giant Blade? 15% weapon strength versus... Uh, the loss of the melee attack. Hmm. Hit considerably harder, but you already hit pretty hard. You know what? I think I'm going to wait on that one. All right, so... Various things I want to do. Are you actually able to reach Adelard? I can't quite tell. Uh, let's do this. Chantal Gagnier, you're going to go right here. Then we're going to move Florence Dubois into your army. And you can both leech XP from Adelard as he takes this. And you know what? Avril Mercier, while you're here, you can do the same thing. Uh, go into regular stance. And oh, no, go into march stance. Never mind, you can't reach it. Or maybe Lewin's in the way. No, he's not in the way. All right. Well, let's move you here. A leech more XP. Alrighty, and then Lewin, you're in March stance, which is potentially at least somewhat iffy, but we may want to burn down the massive four cal. I'm a little bit worried about the Wood Elves moving out and taking these ruined territories, and I don't like that idea. So Lewin, and just head out as far and as fast as you can go. Like so. Alright, and can you reach this now? But, uh, well, you're also on the way. Uh, go... I don't know which way is faster. Maybe this way is actually faster. For whatever reason, the pathing doesn't really like traveling by sea. Alright, next paladin, you're on the way as well. Probably gonna replace one of the peasants in Luin's... Oh, Luin's actually at 19 out of 20, so that actually works out as well. Lovely. Then, oh, let's check Tor Korali and Tor Ivares. I promise no more than that. Now it's up to 5k. Uh, could still probably wait for more, but you know what? I feel bad nickel and diming Altharian too much. I've grown a healthy respect and love for him uh, since, uh, well, because of my ongoing uh, melee-only Altharian campaign, which has been really fun as a challenge, watching those rangers and melee units go into glorious melee combat rather than, uh, you know, those tile elven archers. Anyway... I like Yeltharion. Let's do this. Propose offer. You can have Torcarali. I think we'll give Misnar and Torcarali to Eltharion, but then this stuff to Avalorn. Because obviously, that way they'll both have a complete province. Just gotta make sure that neither one of them rebels. Alright. Not that it would matter to us, mind you, but if we lose it, then, you know, that's lost money. And we don't want that either. Alright. Uh, Esther, you are going to return to Grunzint, like so. And Karun's losing a little bit of public order, but that's okay. It's not that bad. Grunzint's at zero. Fantastic. It'll start being positive once we take the Blackstone post, so we don't even have to do all that raiding nonsense. Alright, next up. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have actually had Lewin Leech XP as well. I mean, I guess everybody doesn't need to leech XP. Uh, yeah, I could just attack. Oh, yeah, there's nobody here. <laughs> they just took it from the... Uh, uh, they just took it from Carcassonne. So, effectively, this is a free... I want to say three... Yeah, it's three... Three landmarks and board alone. And some free stuff. Oh! A Seed of Rebirth. Interesting. Hmm... I wonder if that's worth more than the physical damage reduction or award save that we get from the uh, Talisman of Endurance on Lewin. Certainly uh, something to be considered. Obviously, you don't need this. And did you get an item? Yeah, you, you don't need this either. You're just here to leech XP. And in fact, you are now... Wait. Aren't you already at level 11? Did you, you didn't level up from that? Damn. I mean, I guess to be fair, it wasn't a lot of XP. Uh, Bordelow. We're able to build the Morso Valley Orchards immediately, so I think we'll delete the Weaving House and replace it. Eleanor Dubois, you are where you're supposed to be, and I guess there's not much else to do this turn. 
not going to upgrade anything, and I know it looks like we have a lot of money right now, but as soon as we upgrade one of the uh, settlements, like Kurun, uh, it'll suddenly all be gone. So, yeah. Let us, however, do a little bit of Diplo. And Laura Lorne wants a non-aggression pact. Yeah, sure, Laura Lorne. Huh. Deliver your message. Do a trade agreement for 2.2k. No, never mind. You give us gold. And we'll do the military access. They'll probably ask us for a trade agreement eventually anyway. We're in no rush. And especially not for a trade agreement that gives us such a tiny, tiny amount. Out of here... Gotta keep looking at uh, Rapunz and her potential to confederate. Now let's do military access with Torgavan. We could do defensive alliance with them, but I don't trust it. I really just don't trust the Wood Elves at all. <laughs> with good reason. Especially considering what we know about Zilady. And I believe now we're good. So skip building upgrade available, skip damage building, skip outpost available... You know, maybe we could now build the outpost at Ubersreich. That's the best one to build, right? We could also build one at Nuln if we want to. Uh, Ubersreich at least is present in... Nah, it's present in the Reichland province. I think that's still the better option. Let's go Ubersreich. And in SF, uh, Ubersreich is actually fairly difficult to take because it has a unique... Uh, uh, it has walls despite being a minor settlement, so... Yeah, see the little... See the little... Wall, Krennels, and Merlin's present on the, the little UI thing. You know what I mean? Construct outpost. <laughs> Alrighty, and oh, Carcassonne gave us a mission. Uh, do we care about this at all? I mean, I guess we could take it. I don't think it does anything for us, but why not? Alright, and I believe we're good now, yes? Uh, post available, that's not with somebody we care about. Oh, wait. Did we ever... I will hear your word. And we did not build an outpost with you, but I think it's not available at Lothurn anyway. And I imagine the same thing as at the guy in Vale. Yeah, if those were available, I would have prioritized them, but at the current time, I could just wait a little bit, because we're still going to generate allegiance, and it's not like we're going to be using elven units right now, when we're at 1809 only gold per turn. Too steep, game. Too steep. And turn. And let us head towards the massive Orcal. Altharian, what you want, bud? Uh, you want us to join war against the Dreadfleet? No, you guys can deal with the Dreadfleet on your own. Decline. We might actually send Lewin out there, or maybe even another army out there just to raise the Maelstrom, but, you know, we'll deal with it later. Not what I'd call super critical right now. Alright, let's see what we got here. Confederation between the Golden Order and Oslin. Damn, the uh, Empire are sure, are sure getting those confeds up and running an A, a Talisman of Endurance, and a Holy Icon. Uh, fantastic. Uh, we got the Technology Research Heraldry of Bastun, though that doesn't do too much for us right now because Bastun no longer exists. And I didn't know Bretonia could also acquire students this way. Damn, okay, I should have been doing that since the start of the game. Okay, well, that's a little bit annoying. Uh, that means we won't pick the technology, just in case, because we might get more students. We need more research rate. Uh, you can have a student. All right, so yeah, we'll need to try to level up without the, uh, without the students being in the way, or without the uh, technologies being in the way of us acquiring students. Uh, you... Lewin. Hmm, I wonder if you can... Well, just try to go as close, I guess, to Massive Forcal as you can. Like so. Uh, your paladin can follow. And it is only a single settlement. We should also try to grab Quinnell before the, uh, before the Wood Elves do. And we'll do the same at Akatane. Adelard, take Akatane, please. 2,000 gold, though it may be. Like so, and colonize, and there we go, Rubrienne is now fully ours, we'll immediately upgrade Aquitaine, we'll switch to... I guess Realm of Chivalry, because we'll be building a lot of stuff, and then we'll immediately build those more so valley than orchards. Uh, save 180? Nah, it's fine. It's not enough to be super concerned about. Alright, the rest of you, follow Duke Adelard. And, well, you should actually follow Lewin. And what about you? Can you reach Lewin? Maybe. Uh, no, not quite. Alright, you can, I guess, stay I near 
Adelard. I don't want them to get randomly attacked by orcs or something. Uh, you go right there. Yes. Then, oh, you know what we should do? We should trade the caster for one of these units. Probably one of the peasant archers, because, well, we have a lot of them here. One, four, one, like so. And we need some kind of melee line after all. There we go, Adelard. You should now be a lot more capable on your own. What do we have in terms of defenses here? Uh, black orcs and orc biggins and some orc boar boys plus whatever we have in the stack. All right. It looks like it'll be a decent fight for us. And that's what I like to see. Now, anybody else need to do anything? Uh, Esther, I always forget what your vow was. I was just winning a battle at sea. Well, that one's probably not going to happen, but at the same time, we probably don't care about it, because you're just here to add public order and uh, other various bonuses. You're venerating the lady, so you're fine. Uh, wait, we need to double-check five turns until you're at tier four. Coast of Leoness, you are in the peasant's duty, although the public order is dropping quick, so we'll need to pay attention to that. And lastly, Marienburg obviously can't do anything. We're going to have to uncollect the income here rather soon. In fact, well, probably before it gets to wavering or whatever it is. Alrighty, next up we have nothing, yes? I guess we could try to trade another one of these things. All right, let's try that. Uh, Alicia and Tor a car. How much is Alicia worth? 21. And how much is Tor a car worth? 27. And you're willing to give us 3k, and you're willing to give us 3k. It's not that much. We could wait another turn, probably. Just gotta make sure they don't rebel. Minus 7 per turn? Yeah, we can wait a little bit. And I guess the same is probably true here. Where is it, Misnar? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> He can't afford it. He just can't afford it. But that's okay. He'll get richer over time and then he can pay for us. Or pay us for it. Uh, looks like we're not going to be leveling up this turn, which means we can pick a technology. And the technology we will pick is Support Religious Errantry. I want the bonus relationship with the Chevalier Dillianess, as I want the... Uh, uh, I want the capability of, what would you have of confederating them. Minus 32. All right, hopefully Rapon centers the uh, the fold, as it were, soon. End turn, and let's hit that massive orcal. Hopefully Heinrich Kemmler doesn't declare war on us before we can loop back around, although this is probably his only you chance to do so. Speak. Oh, wow, would you look at that? Reichland to that strength rank, too. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Kind of surprising. I don't see that many of their armies on the field. Like Durthu, Durthu, what are you doing out there? Don't do it, Durthu. Durthu, you're making me... You're making me very nervous, man. Please don't attack the Empire. Uh, you want us to join war against the Fecundites? No. Alright, you know what? We may want to talk to Durthu and try to force him into a war with somebody. Oh, let you look at that. These guys might be willing to go for a field battle. And if they are, you can be real happy about it. Faction destroyed. Burning Wind Nomads. Damn, we were trading with them. Black Pit Tribe destroyed. There's that tech with the uh, Raponce. Uh, Durthu, let's have a quick chat with you. Oh, you're still fighting Clan Angren. You know what? Uh, hmm, I was gonna say maybe we should try to force you into a war with Sylvania, but let's just let him keep fighting Angren. I'm wary of him just trespassing over Empire territory a lot and then getting into a war with them. Damn it, Durthu. Why is it always you, man? Uh, Alright, let's, uh, let's move the Paladin in, and then let's move the XP leeches, and then we'll go. Like so. XP Leech 1. Hey, you're level 12. Nice. XP Leech 2. Okay, you're going to have to go into March Stance. I mean, I guess we could send Adelard here as well, but I think we'll be okay. And XP Leech 2. And, oh, yeah, I don't think you're going to reach that. Ah, we might only be able to get two of them in there. Right, or maybe not? I don't know. Give it a try. We don't have enough space. And you're going to get blocked, I take it? Yeah, you're going to get blocked. Uh, out of you two... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter all that much. We're moving here. They can't even move there. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? Wait, I just want to double check which trough you have, because if it's defeat a green skin... Uh, but it's still a legendary lord, and Grom's not up yet. What do we get out of defeating Grom? It's just relations with the... Uh, huh. I'm pretty sure it's just relations with high elves. 
We changed that great, but we could sack the place and then come back to it once Grom comes back just to get his defeat trade. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Well, either way, Lewin, it's time for you to go, buddy. Let's uh, get to your points assigned. We are going to go for, let's say, maybe it's time to start making you a little bit stronger of a fighter as well. It'll be a while until we need Guardians of the Lady, let's face it. Because we don't have access to the buildings yet. Let's go Blade Master and then we'll go for Heart to Hit. And then we'll counteract Heart to Hit by getting Headlong Valor right after that and massively increasing the weapon strength. That'll work. Paladins, you have not had points in a while. So let's get you your points. Blinding Majesty is what I wanted and I think we can get it now. Uh, massive amount of melee attack versus massive amount of... Eh, I'm gonna go with a massive amount of melee attack. They're already pretty tanky, after all. And I guess Blessing of the Lady. And then into Blinding Majesty. There we go. Oh, wait. You currently have... No, you currently have no contact effects. So, melee attack, Blessing of the Lady, Blinding Majesty. Now you have Grail Banishment. Look at all those resistance reductions. Fantastic. And then you can do the same. You have the same amount of points. So, quality feed, self-centered... Blessing of the Lady, and oh, you have the Executioner's X, which won't stack with Blinding Majesty. Alright, fine, we'll give the Executioner's X to somebody else then. Especially since we went through this line. Not that it isn't nice. Wait, if we unequip this and re-equip it, ah. Grail Banishment always overrides it. Okay, well then you can have a Sword of Strife, and also while we're at it, you can have a Holy Icon for Spell Resistance. Lewin can swap out the Talisman into the Talisman of Preservation to get even more tanky. And... You know what? Switch to Giant Blade now. There we go. Now you're at 65. No, actually no, it doesn't feel worth it. I think the attack might be better. 65, 788. Yeah, not enough. Especially if you're not fighting infantry. When we get him a little bit more melee attack, then we'll uh, swap it out. Who the heck do we send the Executioner's Axe to? Adelard? This does not give him magical attacks, whereas the Sword of the Lady's Champion does. I don't know, maybe... Oh, we have a third Paladin coming, but... Uh, hmm, I don't know if he'll be the best option. Anyway, I have a tendency to digress. Let's attack. The Lady wills it! You're not going to run? Fantastic. Field battle against two orc stacks. That's what I like to see. Let's get to it. Very well. All righty, here we go. And ooh, lovely bright map with a little bit of trees and plenty of wide open space for our cavalry to go to town. We're going to start the battle off with uh, Beaky Lewin and our two paladins uh, going after the single enemy lord that was outside the settlement. And I think he basically routed within the first second of getting attacked. The uh, debuffs from the Grail Banishment can't, uh, uh, can't be very good for him. And and all the damage coming in will bring him down very quickly. And very nice, very nice. And now it's a matter of waiting for the enemy to arrive. And that I am particularly excited about. They got four units of trolls, almost as much cavalry as we do. And obviously way, and I mean way more infantry. And ranged infantry. And then, or missile infantry, whatever. And then we do as well. We're going to position ourselves essentially in the wide open field here with the uh, knights errant that are capable of transforming into foot knights uh, waiting in front of the uh, uh, various peasant units and then of course our units of elites our Lewin's lions and our knights uh, and errant no not knights of the errant but uh, questing knights are ready to charge in through the main enemy line of course we are going to allow the enemy to close the distance so that they can be chased off and destroyed rather than you know run off the map immediately anyway let's begin by having the paladins attack some of the enemy cavalry here be able to get at least a decent amount of kills out and now this bush is gonna be in the way okay well that's life uh let's see what we can do about all this of course nothing here is a real threat to the paladins or to lewin so we should be okay and 
We have the effect of the uh, various uh, debuff auras in addition to the Grail Banishment and the bleed caused by Lewin. It's all pretty nice working together like that. While these guys get to work on the enemy cavalry on one flank, the other flank will be protected by two of our anti-large uh, Knights of the Realm, the Tomorrow Knights and the Tonights, and the Knights of the Azure Sky, our Pegasus Knights as well, who will hopefully meet the enemy light cab in combat in the trees. Here come the Pegasus Knights and dropping from above the canopy. Actually kind of an interesting idea as the enemy would have a difficult time spotting the uh, Pegasus Knights on approach in that manner. Knights of the Realm are charging through as well to go after those aptly named Forest Goblin Spider Riders. Though, of course, there are more enemies to be found here. Those wolf riders and then the god boar boys as well heading into the fray. And that may be a few too many units at once for our knights of the realm. So we're going to back them off a little bit. Perhaps draw them away to combat us uh, out here somewhere. Rather than on the flank of the entire enemy army where they have plenty of melee troops as well. Lewin and the paladins are still fighting. They have managed to chase off some goblo goblin rather wolf chariots though these guys will probably escape off the screen we probably wouldn't have been able to catch them anyway so not a big deal in fact you know what let's speed this up a little bit while the armies move into position Lewin and the paladins are now going to go after the second enemy lord i think there's three enemy lords or at least two enemy lords and yeah there's a black orc big boss so two enemy lords and a hero to take care of and it looks like the second lord is just about done as well just as quickly as the first although it looks like the enemy is going to send in some wolf riders no wolf riders are going by hmm and here I thought he was calling for a raid. And that's okay, the Knights of the Realm are still fighting on the flank, getting a charge into all those goblins, and the regular forest goblins with spears have arrived to help out the spider riders. Very appropriate for the forest goblins to be fighting in the forest. And I take it, uh, wait, do the forest goblins have stri forest strider or something along those lines? Uh, forest goblins, they have strider, stock expendable, proper smash. Huh, they don't actually have any forest capabilities despite being forest goblins. Interesting. You'd think they'd be more adept at fighting in a forest than a regular goblin would be. But apparently not the case. Hmm. Well, at least they can uh, do a proper smash. Anyway, these guys are going to continue fighting on the flanks, but that is merely the opening skirmish as the main enemy army starts moving in towards our own. We're going to start targeting those trolls first. Poison and fire arrows are dropping among them, dropping their leadership down to a mere 40... Oh, which is 36 now. <laughs> a very, very low, and it's in fact uh, close to half of that of a peasant unit. Now, these trolls aren't going to be able to achieve too much, though I'm sure they'll be able to charge in to our foot knights. Uh, the non-foot knights, the fort knights in this particular case, are going to charge outward and find another unit of trolls to deal with, apply that anti-large uh, that they've got as they are knights of the realm and hopefully destroy these trolls while they are unprotected by the rest of the enemy line. And we've got more charges happening all over the map as the Lewin's Lions and the Questing Knights as well start charging into the uh, most threatening enemy units they can find, which means biggins and damn, that's a heck of a charge. <laughs> I like how these guys are able to maintain the cohesion of their lance formation here, and you can really see it with the uh, with those glowing lances before they start wheeling around and turning back to hit the enemy again. Here come the Questing Knights with those great swords swinging and of course we're going to want to try to focus down the enemy uh, uh, the enemy black orcs as best we can as those great weapons of theirs the armor piercing at 75 damage is quite a lot for a unit with 100 units and definitely have to be wary of those guys as they are most definitely a threat to our knights and could most definitely bring them down all right, time for a little foot knight action as the trolls move on in, getting another few hits from those arrows, pox and fire alike. And of course the trolls being weak to fire, this is also probably helping out. One of the good things I guess about the uh, foot knights is they're unlikely to take nearly as much friendly fire damage from the, uh, uh, from the peasant's arrows. 
All right, and let's hope that they can distract both the goblins and uh, the trolls long enough, though the trolls with that leadership uh, start to break and will probably rally, but at the very least are out of combat for now. Out here we have Black Orcs facing off against Lewin's Lions, and I'm sure they're giving as good as they get. As we can see, the corpses of both types of units lying there. Gotta be careful about overstaying our welcome around those great axes. Rather than a cycle charging here, but not to worry, we've got other units that are at play and can charge in and help out against those Black Orcs. A unit of, actually two units of Knights, of Questing Knights charge the Black Orcs and force them to break, though not yet shatter. We also have to remember that while this battle is going the uh, key, or at least one important priority in this particular battle is that we do still have to chase a lot of units down, which means as units break away, we're going to have to commit knight units to chase them in order for them not to escape off the map, forcing us to fight them again, as that would otherwise be quite irritating. Alrighty, Lewin and the Paladins still racking up a decent kill count, 93 on Lewin, and let's see what the uh, what the damage is looking like here on him and Beaky, over 30k, very respectable I gotta say. And damn, knocking out uh, several boar boys with a single pounce. And of course, the Knights of the Azure Sky are getting ready to help out. They've been hunting units of light cab, but uh, with few of those remaining, uh, they can start working on enemy error boys as well. Over on this flank, the Knights of the Realm are still fighting, but there are still more units moving in from the forest where they failed to originally catch them, so we'll still have to contend with that part of the fight. And this is a unit of questing knights, actually, not a unit of knight, on, knight of the realm, knights of the realm, rather, who were chasing off this unit of trolls, but ran into a unit of wolf riders. Not that each, either of them, is particularly threatening to that particular unit of knights. All right, wheeling around, punting goblins and charging directly into the formation of boar boys and biggins, a dangerous place to be, but we don't have to hopefully stay here for too long. Oh, you gotta love these open field battles when you have a ton of cavalry. I know, it just it just feels like a more realistic battle in some ways, you know what I mean? With all the maneuvering around, the cavalry running around rather than uh, uh, the two lines clashing and then instantly melting. Which can sometimes, well, sometimes, which can often, I should say, happen in vanilla. What do we have out here? The enemy Black Orc Big Boss facing off once again against Lewin and the Paladins. And it looks like he's going to be brought down very quickly and will in fact shatter. The rest of his army is looking to follow suit fairly soon as well. As a lot of the enemies are starting to break. Just a little bit more, Foot Knights, you can hopefully help out with this to some degree, though they have taken damage at this point and the damsels are also joining the fight as well. Though in this particular case, it looks like they will probably just be able to chase. Uh, huh. This Prophetess is actually getting surrounded in damage. I don't think this actually happened when I played it, but uh, uh, the replays in Total Warhammer can sometimes be somewhat buggy. And some units take more damage in the replay than they really did, so just ignore that part. Alrighty, and now it's chasing and hunting enemies down. Luan, of course, here to try to knock down individual models of uh, trolls. There's a couple of knights that have taken heavy damage, though we do have to remember the damage does not necessarily correspond to unit lost, as this uh, unit of foot knights has a third of its units remaining, or now a third of its HP, and but way, way more units than that, and will thus heal up relatively nicely. All right, and it looks like we're nearly there. In fact, we are completely there, as despite the fact that a decent amount of enemies still remain, we were able to uh, force the rest of the army to shatter. Yeah, I don't think this happened. This uh, prophetess never got hurt, or if she did, I didn't really notice it. <laughs> 
Uh, seems like the uh, the replay was a little tiny bit off uh, from what actually happened, but otherwise more or less uh, more or less what was supposed to. Next and once again, this unit of uh, this unit of knights for the lady are at half HP, but have 50 out of 60 models, so they'll heal up nearly to full, regardless of the damage they take here. Anyway, with that we can do a lot, and I mean a lot of chasing. So I'll do that off screen. Let's see what the actual damage was. All right, very nice. A respectable bit. Oh, wow. Ransom captives basically gives us nothing. Thanks, game. Shame, but not a big deal. The battle, however, was very much not a shame. A close victory, and I know it doesn't look it, at least on the uh, post-battle screen, but we have to remember that the uh, pretty much every single knight unit was at around 50% HP. It's just that they didn't lose models, thanks to the help of, well, uh, having lots of HP per model in combination with that uh, Earthblood slash Life Bloom on the uh, Life Mages. Otherwise, it makes it look like we didn't get hurt at all here, even though we most definitely did. Anyway, uh, we're gonna kill the captives, execute them, because while well, ransoming them neither makes sense, nor does it really work here. Ally mission successful for Carcass Sun, work Spain for Lewin, and A, Defenders of the Fleur de Lis, Knights Errant. Hmm, and I was gonna put the Paladin in your army. And another Luin Heron tree is completed as well, though we got a Ruby Ring of Ruin, which is garbage, so we're gonna probably uh, turn it into something better. Hey, and we got another student. Fantastic. Now, Luin. Hmm. Oh, this is a tier four. We shouldn't sack it. We could just, we should just occupy it, huh? Yeah, I'm still on the fence as to whether we wait for a Grom the Paunch. I really wish I remembered what the, exactly his defeat trait was, or at the very least what his defeat trait is in SFO, because his original defeat trait, which is just the uh, bonus relationship with the High Elves, isn't a big enough deal, but on the other hand, we just saw him, I want to say, one to two turns ago, which means he died very recently and which means he's not going to revive for what five or six turns i don't think i'm willing to wait for him that long no, i think we'll just destroy the faction then screw it i mean not every single uh, not every single defeat trait is needed technically really you could do without any defeat traits, but you know what I mean. Uh, everybody move on in. I want to leech a little bit of xp and that lord i guess we could move you in to leech xp or Maybe it's better to send you directly to Quinnell and then move there. You know what? I think that's what we'll do. Go to Quinnell instead. Taking my leave. I'd really like you to take it before it's occupied by one of the uh, by one of the widows, and I'd rather guarantee it by having you be relatively close by. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Livin just thought to resolve the rest of this because there's not uh, really anything left here to challenge us. And now that you have Beaky, you have the advent of siege attackers. We don't have to wait for this battering ram and siege tower nonsense. Those are for peasants. If a horse can't use it, it's for peasants. Auto resolve. And we will occupy rather than sack 3.5k as well, but I'd rather have the place at a decent uh, level. And ooh. Unbreakable. Oh, damn. So now he regenerates a lot and is unbreakable on top of that. That's that's pretty darn strong. Hmm. And another Syrian's locket. We don't need it on Eleanor, though. I do notice that a lot of the uh, extra items seem to be picked up by the... Uh, uh, by the damsel and damsels and prophetess. Well, actually, it's just prophetesses in this particular situation, but huh. I wonder if you increase the chance of an item dropping for every individual army nearby, because if that's the case, it's certainly something to consider. Oh, we already have a Grail Chapel here. Swell. Uh, we probably don't need the Clothier here, as this place will not have the public order for it. Uh, so let's demolish this building. We'll... Hmm. Do we want to keep the barracks here? It's unlikely that we'll use it, but I don't know. 
Well, it depends on what else we want to build in the place. There's no resources here, so really it's probably best to just build a bunch of... Uh, uh, a bunch of adjacency bonus stuff and anything that gives us capacities which means for example royal stables which means the grail chapel that we already have that sort of thing which is what we'll do anyway you prophetesses etc stay there i would like to see okay you're at level 12 nearly level 13 i think one more level and then we'll get that last point in 10th share and then we'll just uh we'll send you out to not follow anymore and then go recruit and buff a settlement. I mean, I guess if we really wanted to, we could keep leveling, go all the way through Steward of the Realm, but eh, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth it because we'll get more mileage out of you sitting in a province instead. Anyway, let's see what we got after that. Do we want to build anything else up? Misnar next turn. We'll probably trade. Just gotta make sure. Minus ten, eh? Hmm. A little bit iffy. What? Double check it. I am a How much are you willing to give us for this this turn? Okay, two point four k next turn at least. Oh. And collect the income and we're fine. We can keep on waiting. <laughs> and not as long for Elysia and Tor Car. But yeah, I think one more turn. And then we'll be able to sell that off. Ah, at least this way the uh, the high elves are helping fund our own empire growth. Uh Esther Le Marshal, what do you have in terms of SK? I I'll do a vow check maybe between the episodes or maybe at the start of next episode. I don't think it's uh, needed right now. I do think we need to select another tech and since we now have support religious errantry, we're going to go heraldry of Carcassonne. Uh Five turns? All right. That's not too bad at all. I just got to make sure we get down here, and we also got to make sure we fortify Zifflin, Blackstone Post, well, actually, Blackstone Post and Moussillon, as in 16 turns, the undead will come a call and with big numbers. We ain't ready for it yet. Uh, we also have a little bit of Diplo. Lorlorn, eh, as I said, ready for a trade agreement now. Hey, Aetain, now we got to focus on you. Like so. Payments, please. Mm, yeah, sure. Understood. All right, anybody else willing to do any trade agreements? No. Well, Illyrian and Lorlorn are very, very close to it. Uh, 88 and 90, huh? You get more out of Lorlorn, despite them only having one territory. Yeah, I'm not paying you 1,200 gold for that, though. We need our gold for when Kuran maxes out to tier 4, as everything will get real expensive real quick. All right, just double-checking the commandments before the end turn, but I think we're looking okay. Oh, I lied. And let's get the Morso Valley Vineyards up to Tier 2, and damn, that's expensive. But what can you do? Hey, I did say we'd be uh, needing a lot of cash for all this. And Tier 3 will give us a Manan Temple, yes? Yeah, Shrine of Manan, Corruption in Adjacent Provinces, and All Characters Faction Wide Campaign Movement Range. Now that's quite lovely. And does the port give us any garrison uh, unit of questing knights? Nothing crazy, but this is a pretty crazy uh, special building, so we need to grow the place fast. All right, anyway, skip, skip, unassigned skill points, damage building, outpost available, commandment available. Oh, yes, in Mass of Fort Cal itself. Well, at first we'll be building a few things, so we'll go Realm of Chivalry first, and then we'll swap that out as needed. All right. And I think everything else is fine, commandment-wise. And the turn, go for Quinell. I was about to say, it would be annoying if Carcassonne took it, but honestly, if we're going to confederate them anyway, it won't matter. It'll be annoying if uh, Durthu or somebody else took it. Though not as annoying as if Durthu starts attacking the Empire or somebody. Carcassonne, you want us to join war against Skaven? Yes. <laughs> we're not going to do that yet, but we will later. We actually really, really want to prioritize going southward and taking Tilea and Estalia. Uh, these are all cash cow provinces which will outcompete the rest of Bretonian territories by virtue of the amount of money they can make by so so much and generally something we want to get in the early game. Mm, the question is can we reach those before the end game arrives? 35, 15 turns, we'll have to be careful. All right well either way Quinell should be ours. 2,000 gold for colonization, ugh oh, game. What are you doing to me? Colonize. Oh, look how the EF the Force came back. Uh, collect income, not for now. Hamlet. 
And at Lard, well, there's nothing for you to do. Ambrose, you're supposed to join Lewin's army, though I guess the new Knight Sarant, the Knights of the Fleur de Lis, should do so as well. Hmm. They're pretty okay. Oh, they're anti-large Knights Errant, so they'll function like the... Uh... Alright, fine, we'll get them in here. They're not gonna stay in here, mind you, but uh, for now. Right, let's put you in here. Only you weren't so expensive, but it is what it is. Uh, like so. There we go. And then we will want to say have Chantal take the Peasant Bowman with Pox Arrows out of this army as Lewin will get the third Paladin. We might actually replace one of the uh, Paladins with the Son of Bretonia later on, but, you know, in a little bit. Uh, now, Lewin, I'd like you to move out. I'd like you to head towards Kerrig Ziflin up here. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way we go. Go this way. You're going to go for Kemler. And since you're right beside the Paladin, the Paladin can join your army as well. I like so. Alrighty, and then you guys, well, one of you... Oh, you're at rank 13 now. I think you're good. No need to follow anymore. Alright, you've got your 10th share, and you're done. Now, you're going to March Dance, and you're going to sit uh, at the most farm money-making province, which is right now the Marches of Kurun, followed by the Forest of Arden. Alright, so you're going to head up there. Avril. Next up, how the rest of you? One of you is at 6 and one of you is at 10. Okay, so you, Tenor, are going to follow Lewin. And we just have Chantal do it too, rather than following Adelard. Oh, we should actually use Avril to recruit first. We are ready to recruit at Moussillon, for example. We could get the Questing Knights, though, you know, at uh, a decent amount of cost. And then move over here, grab a few... Uh, Mm, grab a few field trebs, though if we wait 10 turns we could go blessed field trebs and get some grail relics as well. Alright, that'll be your first job then. Uh, Avril, you're going to... Well, I guess you're still going to run for the grail relics, so that doesn't really change what we were doing with you. Alright, alright. And... You know what? I'm gonna go this way as well. It's easier to get UXP with Lewin, as I don't think Adelard will be fighting for a few turns. He'll be heading down to deal with the Beastmen and such, but he'll need a little bit more in the way of better units in order to actually take them on. Alrighty, that's everybody moved. Our public order is horrendous, but until we get a bunch of Shrines of the Lady everywhere, we should probably get used to that. You are still okay, relatively. You are still okay, relatively. Gonna end one more turn, let's say, and oh, you're gonna uncollect your income now. So though it may be, Bordelow's okay, but Akatane needs to be upgraded. Let's go for village here, and then let's go for farms for the additional growth rate. Like so. Uh, Barrows of Quila, you will probably want farms and stuff. Hmm. We build the other Grail Chapel right now. It would give us an additional damsel capacity, which we can either put in an army or which we could, for example, use as a tech thief to get more research faster, which is also always nice. Or we could do, let's see, adjacent. Now, the adjacency bonus wouldn't work here. It would only work for this particular province, which ain't that much. It's only for Quenelle and Paravent. Hmm. A little bit of growth, that's really not the... Yeah, I think we're just going to go for fields either way. Although, wait, with public order low, it might not even be worth it. I just build a brothel. I go for a brothel. Why not? Not enough brothels. Uh, <laughs> let's also see if we can't sell off some more stuff to the elves before it rebels, shall we? How much is Mistnar worth to you now? 46 and 3.4. Now, we can do better than that. What about Elysia for you? Elysia. Elicits. 2k. Ah, oh, damn, they spent their money. All right, we can wait. We can wait, elves. We can wait until you're ready to pay. <laughs> uh, hmm. You know what? Maybe we can move Adelard down here and fight Sloppy Crookshank. I don't remember what's in his army, but uh, either way, we're going to end one more turn. Hopefully, it doesn't go screwy again. Lorelorn. 24 money? Sure. Go for the trade agreement. There you go. 
Just had to double check Diplo. Oh, actually, while we're doing that. 16.5. Ooh, she's down to two territories. We need to be real careful and watch this. Because we need to confederate her before she does. All right, end turn. It'll be real swell to confederate her. Uh, right now, Military Act Alliance, not yet. Not until you get a little bit friendlier with the Heralds of Ariel. I don't know why Mother of Stanky keeps fighting the Heralds of Ariel when they're both surrounded by, uh, uh, by Dark Elves. Deal with those guys first and then start killing each other. Come on. Make it make sense. Alrighty, uh, what do we have here? Supervisor for Avril, Supervisor, negative growth in Longi, unfortunate, but not a big deal. We got a mission, and that's it. Alright, Raponce. How you looking now? Confederation is here. Fantastic. Alright. Well then. Do we need to do anything at the same time as a Confederation? Eh, probably not. I'm gonna do it right now. This is gonna completely screw our public order. But what can you do in- Ow! Egan's errantry are alive. Well, that's new. Huh. Well, good job to them. Either way, Rapunz, propose offer. And there we are. Cetra is right in their territory. We've oh, no, discovered Egan's no. errantry as well, who have done a fantastic job at apparently destroying the... the heck? Confederation with Chevalier de Leonis. Oh, when we confederate this way, we get the buff too. Beautiful. Hero action cost for damsels, speed for lords and heroes, hero action cost for paladins, recruitment cost for peasants. Uh, I mean, peasants aren't that expensive to recruit either way. I'm tempted to just go for more speed. I mean, I know it's only lords and heroes, but that includes the damsels to reposition. Even though I do like recruitment cost, I feel like in the late game, the recruitment cost won't matter at all. All right, I'm going to give us a quick read before we end the episode. The raiders besieged Kuran and marauded throughout the countryside, hacking down the great knights bravely opposing them as they went. It was amid the smoking ruins of a small village in neighboring Lyoness, left in their wake, that the miraculous rise of a humble shepherdess rekindled the broken spirits of Bretonia's battered knights, coalescing them into the legendary war host known as the Chevalier de Lyoness. All right, third tribute. Beautiful, and I take it Raponce is wounded. Uh, yes, she is. Champion of the people. I guess she's also going to have at least somewhat of a peasant army, but probably a more elite one than Adelard will have. Or we could do battle pilgrims with her if we really wanted to. I'll think about it. We'll see what uh, buffs she has in SFO in particular. Did we get any other lords from her? Doesn't look like it. Can't believe you lost Kofor. We're going to have to take that back. We need the Kofor Harbor. Hmm. And you don't have the Holy Monastery at Fyrus because it's only at level 2. Damn, Rapons, what have you been doing out here? <laughs> A little bit odd, but, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, with that, I am going to call the episode here. Oh, Scarbrand. I'd love to get the defeat trait from you. And the one will head down there eventually. Don't you worry, buddy. We're coming for you. And, oh, we don't get the negative confederation trade from that, which means we're actually free to do this mission whenever we want. Okay, we might do that next level then, or next uh, next episode. I thought that the regular type of confederation wouldn't give us the uh, plus two, uh, the plus to public order, but it does. Anyway, calling the episode here next time, we destroy Heinrich Kemmler and the Barrow Legion, and then start heading southward towards the Skaven and the... Uh, uh, and the Beastmen, though keeping an eye on the endgame scenario which approaches. In addition to that, we will start building up at uh, the coast of Araby here and hopefully allow Raponce's holdings to survive. Stay tuned for more Luan. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.